Who? Oh. Hello. Hello. It's Lightning Wolf. I'm Astaria. Thank you for joining us. This is our first official like get together and uh, make a video kind of thing, so I'm super pumped about that. And there's not a more beautiful place that I could imagine being for this um, specific topic that we're going to discuss. Can you explain where we are at in the desert of Arizona? We are in the Sonoran Desert. Hello, I'm Lightning Wolf. And uh, Sonoran Desert is depicted by the saguaros that are around us. There are four different deserts in Arizona. We are in the Sonoran Desert. This is a little mountaintop area where I like to go four-wheeling and hiking in the outskirts of Mammoth, Arizona at an elevation of a little over 3,500 feet. Awesome. So today's topic is actually on shamanism. I got a private message this morning from one of my friends and she was interested in the subject of shamanism and what that is uh, like in the study of it. And I thought it would be perfect for us to discuss since we have a shaman on hand. So uh, I have a couple of questions that have been written down from the private message this morning and then also from some of my friends that um, hit us up on Facebook with questions. So I thought we would do a couple of questions and answers and see where the conversation goes from there. So, first off, Mr. Lightning Wolf, will you please tell us what is shamanism? Sha Thank you, Astaria. <laughs> shamanism is a connection between our reality and the realities that coexist with us at any given time. Uh, Interdimensional connections used for both self guidance and for healing of others. So I know some people want to know, or they feel called to the term of shamanism. Uh, a lot of people ask, what is it like, or what are some signs that will call out to them to let them know that um, shamanism is a path for them to study? <laughs> That's my cue. <laughs> um... So, I guess I would have to start with looking at my own experience um, as the best example to speak from. Um, it was my connection to nature and my wanting to better understand the messages that I was receiving as a child and through my years of adulthood. So do you think that we can be natural shamans? Do you think that it's a gift that only some of us have? Or is it something that's innate in all of us? I think it's innate in all of us. Yeah? Yeah. We're, we're all healers. And if and that's if we want to be more, we can be. We all help each other. Uh, we're all there for a shoulder to lean on and a, a ear to, to drop on. Um, when someone is, you know, going through a tough situation. So, we're all healers, yes. Shamanism is uh, having the tools around you to clear the area or to burn sage and clear the area or to look to the stone people that are all around us for knowledge and questions. Um, even the animals, the feathers, a lot of, you know, a lot of people are type shamanism use feathers to listen to spirits. Sometimes I, uh, I walk with a medicine staff and I have feathers hanging from it. And those feathers are bringing messages to me as, I, as I'm walking. With them. Um, what do those messages sound like? Do they, are, they vo are they voices or gut instincts or... I think a lot of it starts with intuition, with your innate knowledge within 
well from past lives of what something means to me or you or yourself or so forth. And what the plants have to say and what the birds and the squirrels and the rocks and the way things just fall into place. It's not a coincidence. No, no such thing as coincidence. <laughs> just part of the path. Uh, we found this spot because driving up the road, we spotted a roadrunner. And the roadrunner carries a message for us all about chasing down our destiny. Uh, always moving forward and not looking back. So in shamanism, then, there's the plants and the animals, and everything has something to teach us in the natural world. Yes, everything works in unison. Excellent. So you were talking earlier about how all of us are healers. And that comes to one of the subjects that I study a lot, which is Reiki. So I'm curious of what your idea is the difference between what Reiki is and what shamanism is. Well, Reiki is using the greater source to send healing energy, where shamanism is using my own innate powers to do healing work. Why would one decide to use their own energy rather than creator's energy? Because as individuals that we are, we all have our own gifts to offer the world. Okay. Does that mean that some people should be careful about what shamans they choose? Because if somebody has negative or chaotic thoughts that they carry in their energy, that that could transfer to the person that they're working with? Well, yes. We're all going through trials of life. Just because we're quote-unquote um, enlightened beings does not mean that we do not have hardships in our lives. So choosing a shaman to work with um, is, is something that you'd want to consider. Um, but you can do it on your own. We are all healers. We all can have the ability to connect with spirit and to put ourselves through suffering of, of, of understanding. I believe that's one of our questions, isn't it? Yes. Do shamans make sacrifices? Our sacrifices are from within, from ourselves. We sacrifice ourselves to put ourselves through trials and so forth to, well, to become stronger shamans. So would a shaman make animal sacrifices? No. They wouldn't take the life of another being? No. No. Anything we sacrifice comes from ourselves. Um, we pay homage to those plant and animal beings that help guide us. But to sacrifice them, no. Mm -hmm. we, work, we live in unison. Speaking of unison, how do you think that Reiki and shamanism, how do you think we could benefit by using them together? Hmm. Benefit by using them together. You think if you tapped into the unlimited source of creator to do the work that you do in shamanism, that um, it would potentially have a different outcome or would provide you with energy for longer? Well, speaking of, of using energies from source, um, when I'm going to do some healing work, I carry this medicine bag around my neck and I call the source to gather the, the appropriate crystals to do the healing work that I need to do. Mm -hmm. So in essence, yes, I am using source, but I'm using my own abilities as a medium to project that source outward. I heard somebody say one time that in shamanism, there's a belief that whenever you take illness away from one part of the body, um, that that illness has to transfer somewhere else. So like one time, uh, this little girl had an eye that was crooked and her eye went straight after the healing, but the part of her pinky actually became twisted as well. So we did Reiki on that little girl and her finger finally went straight. So, um, where would the illness go in regular shamanic practice whenever it's being taken from your client? Where it needs to go. 
Does a shaman particularly direct that energy when no. we're to go? No. We can direct it back into the earth, but um, clearly we trust in the source, um, the great spirit, the great mystery, to send it where it needs to go. Unfortunately, um, a part of healing is that when we heal someone, that somewhere else, someone else is going to suffer from that. So, as a shaman, especially as a, as a practicing shaman, we take that suffering upon ourselves to relieve those that we're, we're practicing healing for as a means, as a catalyst to not have it go out to just anybody else. Well, what safeguards do you have to go through then to make sure that you don't get sick? Uh, <laughs> fasting, cleansing of the body, cleansing of the spirit, um, staying hydrated with water. Water is the, the, the blood of, of the earth. So, yeah. um, I had somebody ask, why do people call me a shaman? And where do I get trained so that they could potentially be right? Training is something that doesn't happen overnight, nor does it happen like a yoga facilitation that's two or 300 hours. It takes time. It takes years upon years. Uh, that's a woodpecker. <laughs> we're, we're, I've got a woodpecker, brother or sister. So, um, as I was saying, um, it takes time. Um, start off slow. Start working your energies with yourself by learning how to love yourself. And um, the plant beings and the animal beings, they will call to you and guide you as need be. Um, trust your intuition. Your intuition is the most important part of it. Yeah, because it's not exactly easy to find a shaman to study underneath. No, no, it's really not. Especially one that would take you on um, as, say, a crutch. Apprenticeships? Do they do apprenticeships? No, I don't. I, I do uh, hear of people doing apprenticeships, but it's not a common practice something usually that they would keep within their own tribe it's something that i can teach you how to how i learn things but that doesn't mean that's the best way for you i believe the best way to practice in learning shamanism for oneself is to take the hard path and go about some ceremonies that um well that take you out of your normal reality. Uh, I spent a good two and a half years alone. Um, and when I mean alone, I mean I was within society, but at the same time, I shielded myself from interaction. I uh, did very in-depth fastings and very in-depth um, not starving myself, but um, no fasting is just mm -hmm. starving myself. <laughs> um, just very innate initiative um, intentions of uh, connecting with the spirit world. And one of the best ways to connect with the spirit world is fast for days on end. Uh, I start with one day, I work that to two days. I work that to three days. I work that to five days. Uh, the longest, and I don't recommend it for just anybody. Um, you know, I fasted for almost 10 days. Is that no water too? That is water, yes. Water is the source. So do you think that somebody would be calling someone a shaman just in passing? Is that a sign from nature perhaps trying to get across like hey buddy there's more for you to do out there yeah so i think if somebody was to call me a shaman um obviously there's something that they're looking for that i could possibly help them find 
Sorry, I think both of our attention is distracted because it looks like there are some military jets. And then one is carrying, what is it? He's, there's two things coming off the wings. Yeah, it could be a, a refueling plane. And then that one just went back off into the distance. Mm -hmm. Man, you can see for like, seems like you can look for hundreds of miles up here. It's beautiful. I'll have to take some pictures and share it as well so you guys can see what we're looking at. It really caught my eye with the clouds over top of the mountain. Yeah, I saw the plane. Yeah, Mount Lemmon is completely covered in clouds. It's been all day. There's still lots of uh, some snow coming down on Mount Lemmon. So yeah, I guess if somebody's calling you a shaman, that's spirit world saying, uh, hey buddy, there's something more for you to look into. Perhaps you should do some self-exploring with that. Perhaps you're at a bookstore and you're looking for a book and off subject, another book calls to you. That's a message from spirit. Or you are watching a movie and you get really emotional. That could be teaching you something about yourself, about something that you need to work with. Uh, or work on. Um, you could be taking a walk into nature and this particular bird keeps following you around. That is spirit connecting to you. That is a part of spirit saying, hey, look into me. Learn about me. Learn to um, in in animate me. Animate? Animate. Animate? Imitate? 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 Animate? <laughs> well, to animate would be to act Make as that, that spirit being and to intimidate or not imitate us. To, uh, to be like? To be like. Yeah. So we were talking about the tools earlier. and um, I brought some tools with us. Yeah, you did. What are some common tools that shamans would use? Well, a rattle is a really good tool. What would that do? You rattle around and clear the space before we go into our meditation. I don't know if you heard me, but a rattle is good for clearing space before you enter a meditation. Um, another tool is a drum, which is good to listen to either yourself or to practice yourself. Put yourself into a trance. I actually um, would listen to a CD that was shamanic drumming so that I could have my hands free and concentrate easier on my breath to take myself to a different place. So the drum will induce a trance? Yes, if you focus yourself, if you focus everything out, just focus on the beat. It's easier if you're just beginning to just listen to a CD or record yourself for at least 20 minutes and then listen to it. Do drumming journeys, I would like to go speed up a little bit, go to make it loud. Close your eyes, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. you're listening to your own heartbeat.
spirits telling me they like that. <laughs> they want me to continue. <laughs> but we have uh, four more work to do. I could see red. When my eyes were closed. Nice. Yeah. New beginnings. Woohoo! Yes, new beginnings. Perfect. I've been in Arizona for two weeks. That's new beginnings. So with your tools also, like, um, are there specific tools that you can use to get in contact with specific spirit beings, like your ancestors or the animals? Well, the animals I would connect with, like, one of my totems is the turkey. So I would carry around turkey feathers. Um, I know, like, start one up a star is totem animals is the deer. So I would recommend holding some antler. If you have the hawk, you know, you can tie some feathers in your hair, or I'd even tie feathers in my hair. I don't have long hair anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's uh, lots of tools that you can use. Um, if you want to connect with a heron, let's say you hang around where herons would be, around the water. Water and earth is their medicine. Um, I would even practice walking around like a heron, slowly, one foot at a time, slowly. Animate that creature, and that creature's spirit will will draw into you. Um, and when you're when you're looking, look at one spot. Pay close attention to one spot as you're walking towards it, and, and walk like. It. Walk like a dinosaur. <laughs> Birds are dinosaurs, right? Um, you want to get to know your cat better or your dog better. Act like a cat. Act like a dog. They might look at you a little funny, but that's okay. The world around you might look at you a little funny, but that's okay. If you care about what other people are looking at you like, you're going to lose focus and you're not going to make a connection. That's a good point. So let's say um, back in my lineage, I have a woman that is a Blackfoot tribe. She's from the Blackfoot tribe. Is there something I could do to get in contact with her or try to bring her closer into my life and to work with her as a guide or as like a spirit being, somebody that's around me and helps me? Well, how do you call angels to work for you? I just call on them. Say, hey, Michael, come here. Well, you can do the same thing with her. <laughs> it's sure. that easy. It is that easy. Really? Because everybody tries to make it seem like it's hard that you have to do these really crazy things to be able to get um, favor from the spirit world. You just have to open yourself up. You have to allow yourself to be open to receive. If you're not open to receive, then you're just spitting against the wind. So, uh, with these different tools that you've shown us, um, do all shamans practice the same way? Are they all going to use the same tools? Are they all going to use the same ceremonies? Are their ceremonies going to be the same? Some might cross, but for the most part, um, a shaman is on his own path. And so he's going to do what he knows works, and he's going to learn about what doesn't work and why. And so... Um, I look to other shamans for guidance just as much as they're looking for me to, for guidance. I am no longer, I'm no more a master than I am a student. That's excellent. That's what I talk about in my Reiki classes is uh, whatever you feel like is going to work is what's going to make it work. So if you go into um, a ritual or a ceremony and you're like, oh, I don't know that this is going to work out, it probably isn't. And there's some animals that you can use to connect with, like the earth. So I, a representation of the earth is, is the turtle. So I will use a turtle, and I will hold the turtle. I'll bring it with me. I'll even talk to it with that child within. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I, I want to do this kind of healing work. Would you help me with that? Can you guide me to, to do that? To the tools I need to facilitate such work. And I guess this is why Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce would say that we are all our wisest when we are like little children. <laughs> because that requires us to be like little children. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, thank you.
<laughs> All right, and then um, the last one I actually have is, are there any books, authors, or YouTube channels that you would recommend for people who haven't found somebody to study under? See, a really good author I would recommend would be the late Kenneth Meadows. He's no longer with us. He's in the spirit world. He's from England, but he um, he's looked at many faucets of many different healing aspects of different areas, whether it be um, Buddhism or even Hinduism or Taoism. Uh, he, he looks at a lot of this. You got to understand that being a shaman doesn't make you a Native American. Um, all walks of life have shamans. Um, some people are labeled pagans, but they're also shaman. They're doing healing work. May not be directly with other people, but they are still doing healing work. Shamanism is like, uh, what? I used to have a button uh, back in my 20s. It said, God was too big to fit in one religion. Yes. Well, shamans are found in all walks of life. That's good. Um, I read Michael Harner's book, The Way of the Shaman. And I thought that was pretty interesting. It kind of scared me on the idea of doing um, ayahuasca. Because he had some crazy trips. Well, but, um, I had asked my mother even one time about doing ayahuasca and she suggested you know Andres you should really go back to Ecuador where they actually practice it and where the plants from and so I left it up to the spirit and a few years ago uh, a friend that I'd made here in Arizona Brittany she had something had called to her say to ask me if I wanted to join her to do an ayahuasca ceremony I said you know what I think you're right because I had other little signs calling to me to, to say, hey, there's this over here. Let's try this now. It's time. So that's really important is trusting your gut and your intuition and following the signs that you're given. Indeed. Indeed. It's so pretty. <laughs> we'll have to do a little panoramic view of, of what we're looking at here. because I mean, I can see clear 100 miles that way mountain ranges in the distance. And Mount Lemmon's probably maybe, as the crow flies, maybe 30 miles. Yep. So, it's a long ways out. Yeah. So is there anything else you would like to share? Um, trust your every footstep. And when you make that footstep, walk with your heart. By walking with your heart, you're smiling upon every living being. You're smiling upon yourself. And you're showing a confidence to spirit that you're ready. And when spirit sees that you're ready, spirit will give you the knowledge. He won't flood you with it. If she, spirit, there's no gender in spirit. Spirit won't flood you with it. Spirit will guide you. Hey, there's this. There's this. And it's up to you to take the initiation to use it wisely. What's that saying? When the student is ready, the teacher appears? That is correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's just nice to sit out in nature and not do anything. And just trust what is around you. Like people that go out on a vision quest, per se. Yeah, they go out on the vision quest, they acknowledge the four directions, and they stay in that spot for two to four days. They don't leave that spot. Usually there's someone that's um, I hate to, taking care of them, not really facilitating to them, but um, a good teacher will bring you water and you won't even know that they came. <laughs> wow. Yeah, as you're sitting up on the mountain, so to speak. I could sit on this mountain for four days. Knowing that there's coyotes, bears, bobcats, mountain lions all around at any possible time. Well, spirit will notice this. 
And if you have faith in spirit and trust in yourself, um, you should know that you're in a sacred space and that no harm will come to you. All right. Well, we're a little over a half an hour into this thing, so I think we're going to wrap it up for today. We're going to give them a little time. In the field. Yeah, we're going to pick up these <laughs> cameras and like move them around. I'm not sure how this is going to work since, you know, we decided to come out into nature and talk about natural things. I brought my laptop and my phone just to see how the sound will pick up. And I'm not sure how we're going to use these angles. We may use them both. We may use just one. I'm not sure. So, uh, yeah, we're going to pick up these things and try to give you a nice pretty view of what the we're The rain at. clouds and the blue yeah. skies. And... Yeah, the thunder could come in any minute. I would love that, actually. Hey, be careful what you ask for from spirit because it'll, it'll deliver. That's true. Especially if you need to be a part of it. I used to talk to the thunder beings and the storms would get stronger and stronger and build. And Let's talk to the thunder beings. <laughs> well, can you are my friends? All right, let's see if we can get you guys a good view. I'm going to pick up my phone. This is behind me. you do that, me. I'll end us with some drumming. So... Hear that bird? I can hear it. What'd you say it was? <laughs> I think he's laughing at us. I don't blame him. I'd laugh at us too. Look at these silly humans. All right. Until next time, be blessed. Blessing us with our song. All right. I'll see if we can get this to work. I was going to say, I just heard it. Yeah. Definitely don't be afraid to talk to the birds in their language. And don't get freaked out if the crows wave back. wheel drive. We would have never got up here if it wasn't for that. Got a little bit of trash to do to pick up from the space. Yeah, people, when you're out in nature, pick up your trash, please. Um, don't be afraid to pick up other people's trash. Exactly. The spirit really appreciates that. Yeah, there's like four shotgun shells just in this land. There was a time when I lived in Germantown, Maryland, and I would walk two miles with trash bags to pick up trash from a water retention pond. And after doing that a few times, walking around I started getting gifts from spirit showing their thanks to me. Sort of like the crows do. 
Yeah. I like it. received a, a heron feather. It was probably about the size of this top. Cool. And that feather, in my work, would zap me <laughs> with electricity to get me up and working. Wow. things I can tell you about starting your shamanic practices stay away from drugs and alcohol very true there's a reason why they call alcohol spirits oh until next time be blessed